Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. We're standing next to the truck and trailer. We are about to head to UW, UW Platteville, uh, the college farm, and pick up a bull. So typically every year I go to the annual 2K cattle auction. This year I actually didn't end up buying a bull there. Um, but after looking at my numbers, thinking it over some more, I decided that I really should have another bull. Uh, so I was watching the beef performance sale at UW Platteville. They have one out there every year and I ended up buying a bull there. So Hannah, Lucy and I are going to go to UW, UW Platteville, uh, pick them up and then take them back over to Rockville, dump them in the lot with the bulls over there. And then when it comes time to let them out to pasture, I'll go pick them up and bring them out. But um, looking at my cattle numbers, I decided that I really should have another bull to spread out my risk uh, to try to not rely on pushing my bulls too much. Um, he'll be a younger bull. They say that you shouldn't put him on more, a young bull on more than 11 to 15. And then they say after the first year, every month of age that they gain, they can be run on another, uh, another animal. So looking at it as it is right now with four, I have 70 cows out there that I'm looking to get bred this summer. Um, I feel like four is a better number than three on 70. I ended up keeping back more heifers than I was originally originally planning on. And um, I feel that by buying another bull, even though I wasn't really crazy about spending uh, money on a bull again this year, because I told myself I wasn't going to, um, but that was before I kept back more of my heifers. So uh, trying to grow my herd and keeping heifers back is an important part of that and changing out genetics. And to me, I think it's a good plan to plan on buying a new bull every year. And then as they age, you know, swap them out. So we're about to fire the truck up and head to UW Platteville. Let's get going. Can't forget rocket. Calving season is officially upon us, and that means it's one of the most stressful times of the year. So we are up to three calves so far as of this morning, and we're gonna walk down to the steer lot, check for any new calves, and we need to go down and tag the new calf that we had out there this morning. So the day that we dropped our first calf of the season, Hannah and I stretched up a temporary hot wire fence from the steer lot over to the corner of the field. And then I got an old protein tub that I'm using to put water into just temporarily. I've got a hose and a hydrant down there that I just have to hop over the pen and fill it up uh, once a day right now. But um, I've got two cows down in that lot. The reason I'm doing that is so that after the cows calve, I can move them over into a better uh, lot with firmer ground because I am worried about the spigot turning back on and us getting more rain as we head into my true calving date here in the next week. So um, we are gonna go down there, check on this calf, see what we got. Um, I'm doing a couple different things. So uh, starting last year, I really started getting a little bit more neurotic about making sure I get all my calves tagged because it's extremely important for me to know which cows are losing their calves and to try to figure out why. Because if a cow is a bad mother, you know, she takes care of the calf when she's in the lot, but then they head out to pasture and she just completely forgets they exist. And every year, if I can figure out, hey, this cow is losing her calf every year, then I'm gonna get rid of her. So that's one of the things that I'm hoping to do by keeping better records. And um, like I said, last year, I really started taking note of everything that I do to the cows, what I give them, when it's given to them. Um, the, when the cows calve, and the calves hit the ground, if it is a bull, I will put uh, bands on his nuts to castrate him. Uh, that way it, it, we're getting that out of the way at birth and we don't have that mid-season stress uh, later in the year when we go to 
castrate them. So uh, I liked doing that. If I'm looking into selling some bulls into the future, especially on, well, mo mostly on the registereds, um, I'm probably gonna leave those calves intact. But as of right now, I'm not gonna have any registered black Angus calves until next spring. So, uh, Han and I went and got a new bull, so I'm confident that I have plenty of bull power out there for the summer. Um, we've been tackling the mineral, making sure that the cows have a a steady supply of mineral, which isn't, isn't something that I've ever done in the past, um, to try to boost up my numbers and get a higher breed back percentage. I've got a haphazardly thrown together bucket here with all of my tags. The pinks are for the heifers. What I'm doing is I'm giving the heifers numbers that the cows don't already have, so that way if I decide to keep them, it just makes it a lot easier for me. Um, that way they can keep their number since birth. But when it comes to the steers, I'm trying to make sure that they have uh, similar tags on each side. So I've got one set, two sets of red tags that if it's a bull, that calf will get two. The heifers will get one, and that's probably against my better judgment. Um, mostly because when it comes time to change these out, um, once I decide to keep them, I'd rather not put the stress on the ear that's going to have an RFID tag in it. So those are some of the big things that I do. I also have hoof tape here to guesstimate the weight of the calves. I started doing that last year to try to figure out what size calves the cows are having to try to make a correlation with that. Something new that we're trying this year that I haven't done in the past is I'm going to be giving the calves multi-min 90, which is a mix of selenium, manganese, copper, and zinc. And um, I'm just giving them a small injection of this. So if it's a 70, 70 pound calf, I'll try to give them 0.7 cc's of uh, multi-min. Uh, Travis is going with trying Bozy uh, this spring to try to give the calves a little bit of an extra boost because in the past we've had an issue with what we would describe as thriftiness in the calves and their ability to get up and start walking right away. So um, aside with the mineral, we've been giving them selenium blocks, salt, and mineral. Um, I'm also gonna be giving the calves a small injection at birth to try to see if I notice that this helps at all. Um, if I feel like it's not helping, I might decide against doing this, but since I'm really increasing the management on especially my calves, um, I'm trying, I'm going to try to keep track of the calves and make sure that, Hey, the cows are taking care of them, especially right out of the starting gate. Um, I feel like I may have been losing calves once I kicked them out to pasture because once they get out there, the calves are newborns and they're pretty clueless to just about everything. And it's pretty easy for, in my opinion, for the cows to forget them right after they birth, which is why we made that smaller, hot wire fence down there for that, that lot below the barnyard so that I can. Uh, put them out and then monitor them because where they're at I can actually see them from the main camera on the power pole which has a crazy amount of zoom on it and um, that way I can zoom in and check on the calves even make sure that they're still breathing down there I can I can actually see that on the camera that's how powerful that thing is so um, makes my life a lot easier when I'm over at the farm I can just check in throughout the day make sure that I can spot all the calves and the cows and make sure that none of them are missing. I'm gonna throw on my head camera and hope and pray that I don't get hurt doing this because uh, it's always a risk every time you go and try to abduct a calf. I really thought that I was gonna use the gator for this more, but it turns out that Travis was right and he really can't beat a good four-wheeler for doing stuff uh, close with the cattle, especially working the calves. So we're gonna go basically abduct the calf, try to get him into the other lot and get the mom to follow. Don't mind the wind too much. It is literally insane. So don't be surprised if I have to put music over it. This is where I've been feeding cows all winter long. So the lot is really tore up on this upper half. But past the wind breaks, I just moved the feeders down there because I knew that they'd be calving. And I'm hoping that by doing that, it keeps the cows on the lower half of the lot because 
as long as the ground is drier, I think the whole lot they'd be fine with calving in. But if they can calve on the lower half, which they have so far, the calves have done pretty well. So there's our junior over there. Okay, so we just have one calf to contend with right now. And the mom I saw her this morning was number P8. I imagine the second she realizes we're moving in on the calf, she'll come running at us. One important thing is to make sure that if they, you spook up the calf, that you get them to run up towards the lot and not through the fence. See, right now is a good time to just If you can, it's always best to come up behind them. But if they're young enough, they're not wise enough to uh, hop up and run away. So this guy, hey buddy, hi. You're not psycho, are ya? Oh crap! Come okay. Come here, buddy. So, now is a great time. Oh, frick. Oh, yeah. There you go. Just stay there. Is that number three? I was mistaken, it's number three. Huh. That'd be cool. Alright. Did it give me? Come on, honey. So we got a nice black heifer. need you to like hang around up here with me. This might be the most farmer thing you see all day. mom so now I got her up in this little area where I can work with her keeping a close eye on mom you got dingleberries on me here you got dingleberries on me all right first thing I'm gonna do is grab the huff tape measure her weight so I know how much multi I'm in to give her for how little they get at this age um, you don't gotta you know, use huff tape or anything to measure, you can just guess the mate. So, on the right is the number we're using. This is usually accurate within 5%. You want it right above the hoof. So, geez. We got 67 pounds. Funnily enough, that's exactly what the other ones have been. Now we gotta find her a number. Look at the dingleberries you got in here, bro. What gives? 67 pounds. We're aiming for roughly 0.7 cc's. The shot goes in the neck subcutaneously. So you lift the skin a little bit. Give her a little rub. That's done. Now we gotta pick a tag. 
All right, so this is gonna be number P81, because I don't have a P81 already. Same as in my cows, I'm putting the tags in their right ear. So when I'm looking at them, it's gonna be on the left side. So that means we're gonna tag it like this. That's usually the worst part, isn't it? All right, so we're done with the bucket. Now we need to get the mom up here. One thing I like to do, is take pictures of the calves so that I have a reference of what I can expect if I keep them back, what their calves are going to look like. At least I have a picture of the mom. This is useful if they have any specks of white on them. Mama's checking her over. I need her to get her to follow me up to the four-wheeler where I can get her across the gate. It's not the best arrangement, but... Funny thing about calves is that when you spend a little bit of time with, with them, immediately they start imprinting on you. So if mom's not around, the calf is most likely to start following you if you walk away from the calf. That's just how they're hardwired. Come on, check. Ugh. I got the mom out. She's right over there. There you go. Hasta la vista. Uh, there's supposed to be another calf in here. But from the cameras, I can't see him because this only, the camera only covers 90% of this area. So there's the new junior. There's her mom. The other calf is up there, and now I can see her. <laughs> so, I've, I'm almost to the point of being neurotic to make sure that the calves are staying in here because after we had set the hot wire up, which I think I'm, I may adjust, um, after I let the first cow out, she was fine with her calf. The second one, however, the calf walked right under the hot wire, but every time he walked under it, the hot wire would touch his back, so he'd go, eh, and then he'd take off running. Well, two minutes later, he'd come walking back up to mom, walk under the hot wire, it would touch his back, eh, and then he'd hop, run back in the, to the area I have here. So thinking about pushing the wire that we set up down to calf height, and then running that other hot wire on the top of those posts for the cows. I just want to make sure that the mom still claims the calf after moving them over into this lot. Right now, she seems a little preoccupied. So like I said about imprinting, once you're around them for just a couple minutes, they'll start chasing you around. Hey, sweetie. You're not a crazy psycho, are ya? Come on, let's go, go get mom. All right, they're close enough together now. I'm pretty sure she'll claim it. See, the one that the calf was trying to cling to, when he goes to try and suck on her, she'll start kicking him. What she was just doing there was she was butting him. And that told him, hey, buddy, I'm not your friend, pal. So, again, he seems to be stuck on her. She'll figure it out, dude. She just needs to get settled in this lot. It's all very new. Well, crap, I did this while trying to shush the mama up with the four-wheeler. Oof. Yeah, I'd say it's a little soft.
so close! Ah. I think we got it out. Mostly. Had to go get the JCB for that one. She's gonna be popping soon. The conditions are less than ideal, but for how wet the spring's been so far, this is about as good a weather as I can hope for. And steer lot hasn't turned to a complete mud pit yet, but they're calling for a pretty big storm next week, so hopefully it doesn't turn into a mud hole. If it does, I'm just gonna have to keep my close eye on them to make sure that everything's good. I don't want to let the cows out to pasture yet. Um, was hoping to get some growth going out there before uh, I let any of the cows out. And typically in the past, we've waited until June 1st so that we can make pasture uh, grass and hay and feed it out over the winter. But I don't know. I don't know if they're going to allow me to do it this year with the earlier calving that I've got. Um, since I had to drop the bulls in earlier to combat the neighboring bull issue. So, so far... I mean, everything's going pretty good. Three cabs down, 45 to go. I went and checked the electric fence and it wasn't zapping. The heifer that I just put in there with that calf kept walking over the wire. So I came back and checked the GFCI outlet that it plugs into and uh, it was tripped. So I reset it and now it's working again. So hopefully that keeps her in. But uh, I'm gonna look into possibly do some rearranging to make the conditions a little bit better for the calves if it starts raining and doesn't stop. Um, we're talking about possibly fencing off or putting a gate in the pole shed, splitting it in half, putting the steers in the one side, and then putting the any cows that may be getting close to freshening uh, on the other side. But um, for right now, the weather looks good. We'll see what happens next week, but we're still a ways for my calving date. So um, I kind of expect that I'm gonna have a lot of calves all at once. So hopefully the day that comes, it isn't too terrible in terms of weather. So um, anyway, with that, thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat, all how farms work. I'm switching to a three video a week, or at least two video a week schedule here soon. Um, now that spring has rolled around, things are getting more active. Um, I've been so busy here the last two weeks that I've had so much on my plate to do that I didn't even know how to make it into a coherent video because it's just one thing to the, to the next. Um, this morning I went and hauled a load of corn, so I'll probably make a video on that coming up. Um, uh, but I'm getting a load of fertilizer here early next week, and I'm going to be spreading fertilizer on my hay ground. The last time I did was 2020, so it's, it's time to get some fertilizer back out there on the pasture and the, the hay ground both. We just restocked on our Hall Farms work hoodies and shirts, the dark Heather, it's called, which is a lot like this. Um, they've been out for at least a couple months, and I finally got a source that I can get them from again. So um, I restocked my supply. If you guys are interested in any How Farms Work stuff, be sure to go to our website, howfarmswork.com, and check it out. I'll see you next time.